versus James Egan Holmes, case number 12 CR 1522. The record should reflect that uh, Mr. Holmes is present with his attorneys and the prosecutors are present as well. We are outside the presence of the jury. Mr. Brockler? Uh, Your Honor, um, we've taken the time that you've given us, and thank you for that, to go back over and I don't, I don't know if it was a spidey sense or something, but as we got to a port point in the transcript that involved uh, a series of three different things that we had not contested as being redacted, I just wanted to confirm that uh, we had done that. And I know that the, we had listened to it and the defense had listened to it, but I wanted to go sure back and just make sure because I still saw it in my transcript and I went back and there are three paragraphs in defense motion, I can't remember, but it was part of defense. It's motion D-264, small a, paragraphs 81, 84, and 87. Yes, Your Honor. They are still physically in the video, and none of them have played for the jury yet. We are still about four questions and answers, maybe two or three questions and answers shy of that. I think we're like one line shy of that, actually. We're like, that's we came this close to it. I, one line, I, from what I saw in the transcript, and maybe I was going off of when I started to freak out and ask to approach is when I detected we were getting within two or three lines. But we went back, we listened to it, um, conferred with defense, and it, it, it looks like it has not been redacted from the video. Now, I have our paralegal working to do that. She tells me she thinks she can have it done by 4 o'clock. Um, and first, I want to apologize to the court for costing it some valuable time on this. That That is... Uh, a mistake that I'm glad we caught it when we did, but it's one I wish we hadn't made. But I want to make sure, too, as we move forward, that we get it done and get it done right. So even though it would take us till about four, I want to, again, give the copy to the defense for them to just confirm that those things have been complied with, as we've already said that they had been, to make sure that we don't create any sort of unintended error in the record. And I, I again, I, I apologize, Your Honor. Well, um, you should have redacted it and they should have cut it. I think what happened, and this is just me uh, guessing, is that whoever made the redactions did not pay attention to the part of my order that talked about uh, the people not contesting what was in paragraphs 81, 84, and 87 of the defense motion D-264, small a. And as a result of that, um, those redactions did not get made, which makes sense now why earlier we saw the part of the video that shows, doesn't show it, where you can hear uh, the defendant urinating during one of the breaks. That was one of the things that, that there was no uh, uh, disagreement between the parties to have redacted. Um, and I wondered at that time why that hadn't been redacted, and I thought that maybe there had been a different part where that sound made it onto the uh, videotape and, and nobody caught it, but uh, now it makes sense. I think what ended up happening is that whatever the parties agreed on didn't get redacted. Those are the only things that there was an agreement on. I'm not concerned about the sound of urination that doesn't prejudice anyone. Uh, it, didn't need, it did not need to be there, but the fact that it, it, uh, that redaction was not made is not... Uh, a huge deal. But the other three are important and need to be made. Um, the only question I have is whether there's a way to just fast forward to the end of the area that's supposed to be redacted and just skip it and have you play the rest of it so that we avoid having a delay. Um, and I don't know whether there's anything in those few pages that you care about or not um, because the redactions are not to the entire pages. There are some redactions on, uh, on three or four different pages. So is that something that you folks are willing to do, or is that something that you would rather not do? Your Honor, thank you for that opportunity. I had spoken about that specifically with uh, Mr. King and Ms. Nelson, and there are a couple spots that are just in between those sections that they would like to have published to the jury. I think they're entitled to have that, um, but we did explore that. Okay, fair enough. If they want it, then it should stay in. So you got to make the uh, redactions. Can we make use of the time by having you ask some questions, or um, can we do something else so that we don't just sit around waiting for the redactions to be made? Your Honor, I could ask questions about the things that we've heard up until this point, and Dr. Reed is in here to hear where we stopped off. I could certainly do that. All right. Mr. King, do you have a position on 
that? Uh, Judge, I, I don't have a specific objection to that. My suggestion was going to be that we, you know, that if we, we're going to, it's going to take 35 minutes to make the redactions and then we're going to check them, that, that perhaps we should just break for the day. But um, if, if, the, if the court wants to proceed in that fashion, I don't, I don't have a specific objection to that. I, I am baffled by how this happened as well. I don't disagree with the court's assessment of why it happened. But I have a transcript before me with redacted sections on it, and these are redacted out of it. And we checked our transcript against the, the disks we were given, and we, I thought, confirmed that everything had been redacted. So obviously there's an error on our part as well. So um, I apologize for that. But um, if the court really wants to to go ahead in that manner, I, I don't have an objection to that. I think it would make more sense to just break at this point and 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 you know proceed in the orderly fashion that we're that we're doing it. But well, first of all, let me tell you that I appreciate counsel's candor. That goes for both sides. Both sides are saying, "Hey, mea culpa," and I appreciate that. Um, I think there is blame uh, for both sides, but these things happen. Uh, fortunately. Uh, Mr. Brockler caught it in the nick of time, or it could have created problems. Uh, again, as I read the transcript, we were, uh, I think, one line away from the area that was supposed to be redacted. So we stopped the video immediately before the uh, redacted part, or the, the part that was supposed to be redacted and was not. So it's as close as it gets. And, and so I'm, I'm glad that we avoided that uh, problem. Uh, in terms of how we proceed, uh, Mr. Brockler, let me ask you, um, if we proceed with having you ask questions, um, I don't want you to take an hour and a half just because it's 3.35 and you want to take time up until 5. Um, and if you think that all you can use of Dr. Um, all you can um, ask Dr. Reed right now would take 10 minutes or so, it might make sense to just break and have you finish the redactions and then give them to the defense uh, so that they can check them. I think my questioning would be consistent with what I had done with other sections. Um, maybe a little bit shorter because we're not quite to the end of this particular uh, portion. And I think there was, with the redactions, less than 30 minutes left. Um, so maybe 15 minutes or so. But it, it might make sense, and I hate to say this since I know I'm eating into my precious time that the court has given, uh, but it might make sense to just make sure we've dotted our I's again, crossed our T's again, and give the defense a chance to again go through this newly redacted disk so that when we start up again tomorrow, we do so uh, feeling comfortable with what we've done. All right. Maybe what we'll do is, um, to make up for the lost time, take a shorter break for lunch tomorrow, if the jury is okay with that, and then on Thursday again. Uh, is that okay with both sides? I, I will ask the jury if that's okay with them. Absolutely. Is that okay with you, Mr. King? If, if we have a, an hour for lunch, that would be fine for us. An hour, yes. yes. Instead of an hour and a half, it would be an hour. Remember that we're taking two hours on Friday to accommodate one of the jurors' uh, medical appointment. And then, um, and then we're staying, I think we're staying until 5.30 on Friday. I'm not going to ask him to stay until 5.30 tomorrow and Thursday because we're, um, at this time I don't think it's, there's a need for it. But uh, why don't we proceed in that fashion? I don't think it makes sense to use 10 minutes uh, for questions with Dr. Reed and then uh, have the um, jury leave at that point and then have us come back tomorrow for 30 more minutes of the tape and then additional questions of Dr. Reed. So, all right, let's bring the jury in, please.
Please be seated, everyone. The record should reflect that the jury is back in the courtroom. Members of the jury, thank you for your patience. We're going to go ahead and stop now at this time, and I'll let you go home a little bit earlier than usual. I'm sure you don't mind. <laughs> uh, and then what I'm, what I'm hoping we do is that we make up for the lost time tomorrow and Thursday by taking an hour instead of an hour and a half for lunch. Is that okay with everyone? I'm not asking you to stay late. Uh, remember that Friday, uh, we're planning on starting at, or taking lunch at 1.15, uh, between 1.15 and 3.15, um, so that we can accommodate a juror's medical appointment. That's Friday. Uh, so we're taking a two-hour lunch on Friday between 1.15 and 3.15, so it will be a late lunch. Uh, and then Friday is the day that I think I had asked if you could stay till 5.30, and I think uh, a couple of you said you needed to check. So if anyone has an issue staying late on Friday until 5.30, let my staff know and they will let me know. All right? Uh, please don't read anything into why we're stopping early today. Uh, as you know, from time to time, there are things that I need to talk to the lawyers outside your presence. They may be administrative things. They may be legal things. So don't hold it against either side. Don't infer anything from it. These are things that... Uh, happen in every trial and that uh, um, the, the judge has to do outside the presence of the jury, that's by law, all right? And it'll give you a, a little chance to catch up on, on things that you're neglecting as a result of being here as much as you're here. Um, please keep in mind my advisements. Of course, you knew that this was coming since uh, I have a little time. I'm going to give you the advisements in full. You should have predicted that. Uh, number one, please do not discuss the case uh, with each other through any means. Uh, you can talk about uh, anything you want and I encourage you to be friendly with one another and to do your best to get along, uh, but do not discuss anything about the case or the proceedings in the trial or anything related to your juror service in this case. Please do not talk to anyone else about the case through any means. That includes your spouse or significant other, that includes uh, other family members, friends, co-workers, acquaintances. All you can tell people is that you're a juror in a trial in Arapahoe County and that we expect that the trial will last uh, until sometime in August or September. Uh, please do not talk with any witnesses, parties, or attorneys about anything, whether related to the case or not. Uh, please wear your juror badge at all times whenever you're on the courthouse grounds and make sure that it's visible to all those around you at all times. Uh, please avoid people talking about the case in your presence. If people are talking about the case around you, remove yourself from that location immediately. If despite your best efforts, you nevertheless hear something about the case or overhear something about the case, please let my staff know that you need to talk to me. Don't say what it is you need to talk about. Just say, I need to see the judge, and then uh, I will speak with you. Uh, and I've done that already with some of you, as you know. Please do not talk to any members of the media about anything, uh, not just about the case. You cannot talk about, it, uh, about anything to any members of the media. Uh, you must not read, view, or listen to any news or media reports that may refer to the case. Because there is media coverage of the trial, it is particularly important that you are vigilant when uh, listening to the radio, watching TV, reading the newspaper, or using the Internet. Uh, the best thing is to avoid news channels or news reports, if at all possible. But if you happen to be reading the paper or, or watching TV or listening to the radio or on the Internet, and a news story comes on, uh, please change the channel um, change the station, uh, turn the page, exit the screen, do whatever you have to do to avoid that information. Remember that there are times when I talk to the lawyers about things uh, outside your presence. The purpose of that is that you're not uh, supposed to hear those things. The, the law requires me to have those conversations outside your presence. And so if there's a media report about it, uh, we cannot have you obtain that information from media reports. Otherwise, it would defeat the purpose of having these discussions outside your presence. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah, and everyone is saying yes. 
So please uh, avoid all news reports. Even if there's a news report that comes on about something, uh, a part of the trial proceedings that you were present for, you're still supposed to avoid it. You must avoid it. And, and I know how difficult that is because I know that there is media coverage of the trial. But uh, I am asking you to please give me your effort in that regard and to make sure you avoid any information from any media or news reports. Please remember that you cannot visit any locations that may be mentioned in the trial and you can, cannot conduct your own investigation outside the courtroom. That means that you cannot consult the dictionary, any treatises, including legal books, scientific books, uh, religious books, any books or any sources uh, outside the courtroom in relation to your jury service in this case. Uh, the law requires that you make all decisions in this case based solely on the evidence and information presented in the courtroom and the instructions of law that I provide. And so that means that you cannot acquire information about the case from outside sources. Please remember that you cannot start forming opinions about the case until I tell you that you can start deliberating. So not only is it, um, are you prohibited from talking to each other about the case, you're prohibited uh, from starting to deliberate privately to deliberate privately in your own mind about the case. You cannot start forming opinions yet. You have to keep an open mind throughout the trial. Please remember that neither sympathy nor prejudice for the prosecution or the defendant may affect any of your decisions in this case. And finally, remember that the attorneys have a job to do and sometimes that job requires them to make objections Please don't hold it against them when they make objections or when they ask to approach the bench for a bench conference. They're doing their job. They're doing what they're supposed to do. So please don't hold it against them when they do that. Similarly, don't read anything into my rulings on any requests or on any objections. I'm simply doing my best to apply the rules of evidence and other applicable rules of law. Do not infer from my rulings that I am for one side or the other. I'm neutral in these proceedings and I am just trying to do the best job I can in applying the law. All right, does everybody understand those advisements? Great, all right. Please make sure you follow each and every one of them. They're all important. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon and I'll see you tomorrow morning at 8.15. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated, everyone. The record should reflect that the jury has exited the courtroom now. Um, is this a good time to talk about tendered instruction number one, the people's request to move the admission of the theater model? Ms. Pengler? Are, sure. Okay, I'm just trying to make use of the time. Before we get off the topic, I just want to make a record that according to our computer, we stopped playing at one hour, 36 minutes, and... 18 seconds. Okay, thank you. All right, Ms. Spengler, I think um, you wanted some time yesterday to uh, think about and perhaps research the people's request to move the admission of the theater model. And can someone remind me what exhibit number that is again, please? It's 1087, Your Honor. 1087, thank you. That's P-TR-1087. Ms. Pengler. I don't have much to add. I would rely, I would object to um, that model becoming an exhibit. Um, I would object to it being anything other than the demonstrative exhibit, and we've also made our objection to the model as a demonstrative exhibit. Um, I would rely on the arguments that we have made in Defense Motion 216, um, as well as the... Um, assertions and uh, the court's order in response to D216. 
All right, thank you. Uh, I'll take a, a look at uh, Order D216 again, so I'll take it under advisement. But one thing that I noticed in the first paragraph of the tendered instruction, um, the defense refers to the physical model of Theater 9, and I know that there's no objection to that first paragraph of the tendered instruction being given, uh, but I don't know that that's completely accurate since the theater includes part of, uh, or since the model includes part of auditorium number 8 as well. So that may be something that we need to redact to make it completely accurate. All right, is there anything else we need to talk about at this time on behalf of the people? You're making those redactions right now, and then you're going to provide them to the defense to, so that they can confirm that they have been uh, properly made. My understanding is the redactions will be done here and confirmed by, by the top of the hour, and then we'll provide them to uh, Mr. King and his team, and by the time we roll in tomorrow, we should know. All right, Mr. King, anything else? No, sir. All right. Enjoy your evening. I'll see you tomorrow morning. The court will be in recess. Thank you.